Today is September 1st, 2019, first day of the month, and we're doing a live stream on current events, politics, economics, news, uh, whatnot, uh, whatever may come, really, uh, any type of news. It could be related to uh, entertainment as well, if you'd like. I'm just moving the mic a little closer. chat the sound is not too quiet okay um, aside from that um, that's the only intro I really want to give we've done a few of these now um, I'm not sure what the frequency is going to be for us to continue on towards the end of 2019 into 2020 because the news cycle is going to kick up but I'd rather kick it down because there's going to be a ton of sound bites coming in, and I don't want to really deal with sound bites. Because um, sound bites are destructive. Um, they they tend to take people's eyes off the prize, right? Eyes off what's really important, because the shock factor kicks in, and uh, and, and people tend to get confused about what offends them personally, their own beliefs, to what is completely destructive in our societies and what the big picture is. And I really want to just focus on those. And again, that kicks into mathematics, right? Because it's just data. Um, unfortunately, to, the, to a large degree, right? It's uh, the way our world is being governed right now is by the manipulation of data, by the acquisition of data, by the power that data gives uh, centralized institutions. Okay. Aside from that, good morning. Curious Devon, hello, hello, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well, brother. This is more of a somber live stream, I guess. Political live stream. I'm gonna keep these up into being a little bit more serious on the political front. And I'm going to be a little bit more ruthless in our discussions, uh, possibly, just because of some of the things that's going on in the world. Uh, so I might be a little sharp today. And not necessarily in the world, but also on forums in different places. Just arrived. Hello, Lord. How are you doing? Eduardo, how's life? Hey there, Chicho. Eduardo, chaos in Brazil, eh? Brazil's going insane. We'll see where it goes. Sharp Chicho. Sharp Chicho, maybe. Maybe. More, um, I think we've done enough of these political streams where we've dealt with a lot of the noise. So I want to get to the core of the issue of the problem. Brazil is on fire. Yeah. As is the Congo, Central or southern africa i guess tomorrow the new sc school year starts for belgium yeah uh it's not tomorrow for us tomorrow is labor day it's a holiday in canada i don't know if it is in belgium as well because labor day is global but that's usually may 1st so i think the labor day that we're doing right now in canada is uh, just canada specific or it could be a commonwealth specific um but uh, tomorrow is a holiday for us so for us the school year starts on tuesday um, and I find it weird in the past in the past just just so people know um, for high school anyway at the end of your school year in high school you would have basically already known what courses you were going to no it isn't we already had Labor Day yeah Labor Day May 1st then. Uh, I believe it's May 1st uh, Labor Day Global um, usually in my part of the world in the past at the end of each school year, you would have already known the courses you would have you would have the following year, right? Right now, what's going on in Canada is, and for the last two to three years, I'm I'm having students going to school starting the next year, maybe grade 12, 11, 10, 9, or eight, and they're not 100% sure which courses they have, right? Which courses that they signed up for, if they got in or not that's where the state of education is people are going into this blind it's crazy 
did not know Canada celebrated Labor Day. Do they call it Labor Day? They, they're actually calling it Labor Day. Uh, but you, globally, Labor Day is May 1st again, I believe. Um, so uh, this is, I guess, again, I don't know if it's Canada specific or it's Commonwealth. I has just finished watching church online. I err when I forget God. I don't know what church is. <laughs> I has. But religion is religion. It's most centralized religions are just institutions that are accumulating power. Uh, maybe church online, whatever that is, to a physical building linked up to some entity somewhere around the world. Yeah, May 1st, we call it Feast von der Arbeit. Ar translated to work party haha <laughs> work party <laughs> that's good labor day here i believe is more based on the fall harvest is it uh it, but isn't that uh what's that called here uh harvest moon harvest moon is a celebration like locally there's a lot of different tribes do harvest moon festivals and stuff like this uh globally i guess um but uh Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I read Ayaz's comment, the devil is real. Ayaz, uh, possibly, but how are you going to deal with that? It's instead of Ayaz, instead of pointing your finger and saying, fire, 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 when people already know there's a fire, maybe the best thing to do is try to help people who have been burned by the fire right uh, try to put out the fire try to make other places like the one that's on fire to become fireproof right there's much better things to do with your time with the energy and with distractions than just pointing fingers and saying fire bad evil horrendous oh my god really because there's a lot of that already online i guess why why should we spend our time i personally don't don't really like spending my time moving from soundbite to soundbite we talked about this on discord i as i posted a comment to the links you posted it'd be sweet if we could work on solutions talk about solutions then noise really i would appreciate it Labor here, uh, please more harvest. Hey Chicho, do you know how the your Twitch top subscriber table works? I've been subbing for a while, but it doesn't seem to populate. You know what? What I did was uh, here. Let's check it out. Uh, where is that thing? Oh, because it's on it's subs. I'm gonna switch it to subs. Vex. So I just switched it to subs. If you reload it. And then it shows, uh, let's check it out. Let's check it out. Um, um, what do you call it? We got Vex that sub, sub to me for nine months. Like from the get go, he was subbing to me. We got Valley and Spot of Tea, Fresh Kiwi. So check that out, man. And thank you for the subs, by the way. Uh, I appreciate it. In the US, sorry, I should have said so. Oh, Harvest Day, okay, okay. I guess Europe Labor Day is May 1st. You know what, global, actually US is different, you're right, uh, from what I remember. Um, crazy old gamer. Because one of the reasons it's so different is because Labor Day is a huge event in Cuba, and I think US wanted to separate that, uh, sort of kill that off. So, in globally labor labor day is may 1st but in the u.s i believe it is different uh, spent all morning watching videos about uh, transcendental meditation and i'm upset of how cool it seems but at the same time it all feels like a big scam uh, i don't eduardo i don't think it's it's a big scam i think there's tremendous amount of scam uh, regarding meditation 
there's no doubt it's one of the biggest noise industries there is um, as far as I can tell um, as far as I know as well um, but I think it's real you can meditate you can uh, astro project if you want you can cut your ties with matter and let the mind do whatever it needs to do uh, but I think there's a lot of, a lot of uh, people selling magic pills for this and I don't think there's a magic pill for this lonely piggy good afternoon chicho hope life is treating well doing well man doing well it's been a good summer did a lot of preserves you don't think there's something to miracles happening because of strong belief of spiritual intervention and support of others in the same faith uh, if that's directed to me curious Devin 100% I do if that's uh, directed towards Eduardo um, hopefully he replies uh, but yeah intention is one of the most important things that uh, you need to control when you're doing anything right and spirituality we're not just matter-based beings as far as I'm concerned there's energy around us that we are energy right we are even energy beyond energy I don't know what we are we're occupying this matter which is also linked up with energy right but there is things that we cannot see and we cannot measure that influence us hey chicho perfect timing morris okay i'll try i'm only human i ask please do because what's happening is uh what what you're posting the way you're doing it the way you're interacting is not helping uh i've been there many years ago right you can only you can only be function on that level for so long without it being completely destructive not to the discourse not to the conversation but to yourself so you have to break out of that really you have to break out of that if you don't break out of that you're down a dark rabbit hole and it's going to eat you up right and you're going to be very miserable and you're going to make people around you miserable and you're going to feed the beast that is spreading that misery what you need to do is start working on the positive forget about saying look there's a fire you could say hey look at all the people putting out the fire hey look at all the people helping the people that got injured because of the fire hey look at the people fireproofing all the buildings around this facility right look at people getting together changing things up so we can prevent all these fires right that's what you want to focus on the powers that be are taking the energy and this is something curious Devin just brought up that I agree with I th hopefully curious Devin agrees with it but there's a lot of centralized power that are taking who we are what we can do the energy that we have the collective power that we have and focusing that on their evils on their agenda right and taking all that attention away from multiple other agendas multiple other communities that are doing tremendous amount of good in this world right but there isn't attention on them because of centralization of power there's charts going around you can go online right now right and just do I don't, I don't know what the search would be there's multiple charts like this but there's bar graphs like this where it says um, a cause of death for humanity um, what media focuses on mainstream media focuses on and what people fear right and it shows like okay cause of death of humanity you know heart disease cancer diabetes and all this jazz right and then terrorism fire all this stuff is way at the bottom right way at the bottom right that's what the data is showing us that's what's really going on and then what people fear is skewed right people fear terrorism fear fire and fear this and then they still fear cancer and heart disease but it's less smaller percentage right and then you take a look at what mainstream media focuses on and it's like terrorism fire this crap and then you have cancer and heart disease very little right 
that's the powers that be that are taking the energy that we have collectively and focusing it on what they want you to pay attention to right why because that is profitable for them that is taking money away resources away from people that are trying to really change the situation okay that's where we want to be that's where i want to be really and that's where i am that's where i decided to be a couple of decades ago i said i'm done with that crap i'm going this direction right takes energy hard work you gotta sacrifice a lot man because you're fighting against the beast right My, your funds decrease guaranteed you gu guaranteed if you want to function where the beast wants you to function by all means there's lots of money in there to be had if you're okay living that way then go over there right but if you really want to know what it means to be a human being go over here might be less funds but it's way more powerful really mind expanding hello i'm so glad i finally got to catch a stream i've watched your youtube channel for a couple of years but never have been able to catch it glad to have you gaming k gun gaming welcome to our live stream it's it's an interesting beast no it's interesting I hope you enjoyed your stay. You're right, Chicho. Thanks for setting me straight. I as I don't know if I'm setting you straight or not. It's just where I don't want to be. If you want to be there, brother, all I can say is don't go there, right? And if you are there, get out of there. That's gonna eat you alive, right? All I can say is I don't want to be there. And a lot of people that are with us right now don't want to be there solutions require unconventional thinking many are not prepared as they do not know what they do not know it often lends itself to those who put responsibility into others hands while claiming the credit when a solution is found crazy old gamer agreed can someone post the link to the sips table sips table subs table subs table if you go uh how do we distinguish between good and bad collections of power if so many are using media to deceive the message? Uh, there's a few triggers that come up, Kira Steven. And uh, Kira Steven, um, if you scroll down on our main Twitch feed, right? I don't know how else to access a sub thing. If you subscribe, uh, scroll down the main Twitch feed, there's a, just below the live now or the schedule, is a table that says points bits and subs if you click on the subs you'll see the subs okay i think the default is supposed to be subs but sometimes it switches up i have enjoyed my stay so far good <laughs> i'm glad i'm gonna read crazy old gamers uh, comment again solutions require unconventional thinking many are not prepared as they do not know quote what they do not know end quote it often lends itself to those who put responsibility into others hands while claiming the credit when a solution is found let's please not talk faith i agree with crazy old gamer i have no desire i ask i have no desire to talk about religion right faith like one of the reasons uh, i'm math centric because i really don't have care what people's faith are or if they have faith in a system or faith in their leaders or faith in mickey mouse or whatever it is right when it comes to mathematics faith irrelevant right what matters is raw data right hope is irrelevant right hope was hijacked during the Obama administration where people gave up responsibility for not only their own lives but to improve the lives of future generations to come they said we have hope hope in what what do they put their hope in right it, it, it it's crazy right religion is personal choice it's just 
just like sexuality, just like faith. Well, faith is religion. Well, faith doesn't have to be religion, really, but faith and all that jazz. What you do personally is up to you, right? As long as you don't force your faith, your hope, your religion, your beliefs, your ideology down the throats of other people, you're allowed to do whatever you want to do. As long as you're not hurting anyone, of course, right? Religion is for the inner being. It's very personal to you. It holds no meaning to others, nor can we ever understand what it means to you. So it only does you injustice to talk about your own faith, only to open the floor for self-doubt. To a certain degree, I agree. Right? Sometimes people want to talk about faith and religion because they have doubt. They're, they've looped certain ideas in their minds and they want certain type of feedback. For me, I have no desire to destroy people's faith because that's what I'll end up doing. <laughs> right? I was just going to say something along those lines, crazy gamer. Leaders? Leaders? I don't, I don't believe in leaders. I believe in uh, belief. Uh, what's the right word, I ask? Yeah? What's the right word? Leaders? I have teachers, right? Some of my greatest teachers, Bill Hicks, Terrence McKenna, Noam Chomsky, Nina Simone, C.S. Lewis, Robert Anton Wilson, entheogens, pain, suffering, life, mathematics, right? <laughs> Do you mean Alex Jones? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean the real Bill Hicks. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Hilarious. The kicker was people actually took that crap seriously. Bill Hicks is really actual no. Bill Hicks wouldn't be caught. No. Bill Hicks wouldn't deteriorate to that state of mind, right? Bill Hicks, to me, was one of the greatest teachers I've ever encountered. With one or two simple words placed in the right location in a sentence in a paragraph or a word at the end of a monologue right would get you thinking for weeks upon weeks until you realize what he really said and then you would question everything that you believed right bill hicks was amazing i know doesn't make sense at all but people want to I know. it's crazy right everyone is their own leader individuality is key in my eyes 100 percent agree uh king gun gaming be your own person and don't let a single person tell you what to do except maybe your boss if you want to work work a job like that yeah for sure and and always be ready to question your beliefs right your faith your your understanding of how the world works 100 percent. but don't be fooled by memes and uh herd mentality such as alex jones's bill hicks <laughs> crazy that people would bring that up i don't know i think a lot of people were just trolling but there are people that actually believe some of the some of the bs that is put out misinformation and disinformation and one thing that people have to appreciate is there are um, I don't even know what you call them now uh, there are basically centralized institutions that hire people put them in buildings to manipulate social media there are governments doing this there's corporations doing this uh, there are even individuals doing this hiring maybe not a building full of people maybe not a room full of people but hiring two or three people to control their narrative their 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 image online right so 
we have to really filter out the noise in the world and there's so much of it right now so much of it right now and it's going to increase okay the noise level right now is a couple of orders of magnitude greater than what the noise level was 10 years ago i, I kid you not 20 years ago 30 you, like the noise level compared to 30 years ago man it's like the difference between richter scale of five and richter scale of like nine right i think religious religious leaders are not elected they just emerge uh i ask if what you think is incorrect okay right this isn't faith this isn't what i believe that then that's the world the way the world is right what what people believe the world the way people believe that the world works doesn't mean the world works that way right i've met a lot of people that believe this and believe that and you go what are you guys talking about you give them some facts lay down some hard data start showing them news and then they they change the conversation right because they're short-circuiting their neurons there's like explosions happening but the data is not going anywhere because all the links have been severed right what what people think the way people think the world works doesn't mean that's the way the world works right but we're not going to talk about how certain religious leaders are put into place right because i really have no desire to talk about religion i guess we got to get off the topic of religion right now for example let's let's talk about this right what do you think about national socialism oh not national socialism again isn't national socialism what the title the name was what with which the uh third reich went under like nazi germany uh lemex wc3 right if if that's the case i have a book recommendation for you i don't have it here right now wilhelm reich mass psychology of fascism read it really if you're if you're bringing this up right now then for me it's taking me a few months i'm about i don't know three quarters of the way through or halfway through i guess right i savor it we've done readings of it we talked about it right if you're bringing this up it's going to take you a couple of years to go through it really minimum it'll take you two years to go through it well read the footnotes go beyond the bs deal with what is what our history has been what is happening at present and what is to come i'll be back i need to get help to help a friend help friends friends loved ones take care of business game we'll be back a couple of days from now i'll be here again and again doing these okay take care of friends and family brother hello old man hello debbie how are you doing what is your 2083 the european declaration of independence opinion Amen. uh what my opinion is 2083 i don't know what 2083 refers to A European Declaration of Independence. European European Declaration of Independence for what? Are we talking about the the beginning of the EU in the nineteen nineties? European Union or I'm not sure what you're talking about. If I'm not back before the end of the stream, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time. See you next time if you're not back. Okay. And if you are fantastic. If not, again we'll be here. Thank you for popping by your first live stream curious time chicho if you had to choose one how would you label your political classification this comes out a lot curious Devin. Uh, the two factions the labels that uh, i find have the most commonality that i gravitate towards because i am against uh, for sure libertarian and anarchism right but i'm not i'm not an anarcho -liber libertarian or libertarian anarchist or whatever it is right 
the two things that anarchists and anarchism and libertarian focuses on are decentralization and non-intervention right decentralization and non-intervention right so those are the two platforms that i know of labels that have not deviated from that that is their core philosophy socialism still believes in centralization and intervention from the people representing socialism supposedly capitalism does 100 percent sure for sure communism does totalitarianism dictatorships and all those fascist tendencies do right i don't know of any other umbrellas political factions that have decentralization and non-intervention as their core philosophies the rhino party in canada does as well i believe okay yeah i don't know i don't know which other ones there are And let me, I, I opened this page up. I'm just going to read this to you guys again, right? Uh, because, well, because, uh, because this topic has come up with Ayaz as well. I'd like Ayaz to see this as well, if you're still here, Ayaz, right? Uh, I feel as though libertarianism and capitalism go hand in hand. Um, no, not the capitalistic, not capitalism, the crony capitalism that we have right now that people refer to as absolute capitalism what we have right now is not it's like doing ussr that was not communism china is not communist it's it's a socialist not socialist that is why anarcho capitalists exist uh uh debbie uh, i disagree i've i've read some things from anarcho capitalists which take our present day capitalism and assume that is the legit form of capitalism and again people take on labels and destroy parties and stuff like this so for me i don't i don't like connecting putting all these names anno anarcho decentralized capitalist non-interventionalist like we put out all these umbrellas then all of these words and titles mean things right and people get lost in the rhetoric and forget about digging down into the core essence of it right and then they start supporting parties instead of supporting platforms all right hello chicho how are you doing starsky how's life agreed but capitalism is not crony capitalism agreed the problem is people are assuming that we live in a capitalistic economic system which we don't absolutely not not even close not even close what we live in right now is a key to in large part to at the beginning stages some people would say mid stages of what ussr was which was complete centralization of power right it's crazy ruled by oligarchy right and bureaucracy in certain parts of the western world you try to do something now the bureaucracy you have to go through will increase the cost to you of doing something that would have cost you maybe ten thousand dollars 20 years ago 30 years ago it kicks it up to like two hundred thousand dollars right and that's not just because of environmental laws and stuff like this it's because of control mechanisms put in so we're really on a fast track to well we are right now in an oligarchic system where power controls everything we do right and we're one step away from what the ussr used to be it seems like monopolies uh binopolies triopolies is the downfall of capitalism capitalized thrives when market share is fragmented curious Devin, 100 percent agree decentralization the reason communism in the sense is that it wasn't even communism but ussr fell apart was because everything was centralized china is a beast on its own right it's very centralized but there are different heads of the dragon 
that are operating semi-independently once all of that goes under one umbrella where the different heads will not be allowed to function independently where they'll pull in the reins that will be a beginning of the downfall of the centralized state of china it's not there yet right it's not there yet but uh, it's shaky ground it's going in that direction it promotes a competitive attitude to companies thus increasing their efforts can you turn up the volume a bit sleepy waves how are you doing should i move closer look at google facebook and amazon these companies control i'm going to move this a little bit closer to me okay hopefully that'll pick it up more uh sleepy waves let me know if that helped okay uh, control the storage and flow of 90 to 95 percent of cyber information yeah and what's happening with google facebook and amazon right companies come out coming out of asia are now dwarfing not dwarfing but they're far fast passing companies uh, online to presence anyway as google facebook and amazon right and ebay and whatnot right the online business in obviously dante how are you doing welcome to the live stream the online activity and business and transactions taking place in the part of the world which is not considered the western world is huge and getting bigger and bigger right what are we talking about um right now i guess the difference between capitalism and uh, economics really which is what we're going to talk about uh, on tuesday right but economics politics are related there's the same beast really but i guess on tuesday we're going to talk about more personal finance which is really where we want to be the, when we're talking about politics economics we want to take that all all that information and put it into personal finance and how we can manage our finances do you think the asian companies are succeeding because of all the red tape in the western world in large part kira steven one of the reasons that th th there's two more than two reasons but two of the main reasons is red tape hurdles that have been put in place so disruptive innovation could not challenge the powers that be that have already established themselves and the other reason is monopolies right the u.s companies can't keep up because of u.s regulations uh the u.s companies curious them the u.s companies can't keep up it's not just because of u.s regulation or canadian regulation or western regulation is because they're fat cats right they lobbied governments to give them monopoly powers so they had no need to innovate right china has tons of red tape though china has red tape only for people who are coming up from the bottom the establishment really doesn't have red tape which is really in the same way that the united states works right you just pay off the right people you get whatever you want approved Right. we've seen that in pharmaceutical industry we've seen that with the fda we've seen that with uh, what do you call it uh, regulation right just pay off the right people you you get it done china is more corrupt china is, is huge like people people assume just because you have critique right uh you point out the flaws in our current system casey how's it going here <laughs> no issues brother and uh, we've had discussions what uh, i talked about and it went well okay thanks for checking in it's good good news us looks like you see you you, you brought in the uh, yes us looks like more me to make peace with the taliban as they attack a second city in northern afghanistan i yes. who who attacks it right I, we can talk about that had a couple of self-proclaimed nazis on twitch so i jumped over really we did well one person came up uh, they asked about on discord I'm, oh did you okay thanks for popping in one person popped up and mentioned 
whatever national socialism stuff and i i just directed them towards wilhelm reich's mass psychology of fascism and they went away <laughs> you just you just do that and if they're brother i told I, the, the, casey at the beginning of the stream i mentioned that uh, i was going to be hard hard from now on on the politics stream i'm going to be a little bit more brutal uh, on the way we deal with these things okay why do you think amazon has a presence in dc metro area now yeah no yeah. it was me sorry i just said the national socialism gang checking and i don't see how this is worthy of a ban no you're not banned debbie you're not banned but uh like the troll factor is huge online and the problem is there are two or three different uh two or three different uh reasons main reasons that people troll one of them is kids they're just noise right the reason they're doing that is because um is because our education system has made them stupid or bored right so they need a little excitement another one is troll farms right that are paid off by um, corporations centralized power and whatnot and the third one is legitimate people that are messed up so i don't want any three of them really interacting with any of them waste of time <laughs> thanks for thanks for taking care of business dante speaking of trolls i know i know crazy haha <laughs> yeah they came to discord and got banned within a few seconds so they're all sort of <laughs> nice thanks casey i suppose that jeff bezos is one of the wealthiest if not the wealthiest man in the world it, it, uh, gaming uh, i don't think he's the wealthiest man in the world not by a long shot he could be taken out any time okay really he could be taken out any time bezos is just a good good lap dog right he's done what he was told to do and you know they've said he, you could live an extravagant life do whatever the hell you want just make sure you do what we want you to do and he's a good boy and he's been doing what they have told him to do you too casey and have have a great D, &D game yes brother speaking of troll yep he done <laughs> what a troll am i right guys troll the 22nd troll the 22nd troll I hope that's a name you picked up a long long time ago i have students that like trolling who are they uh they would be the the banking oligarchs right banking is huge huge part of the world in terms of bezos yeah uh, i follow you curious uh, so the banking institutions are huge okay some people call them the money lenders some people call them the establishment some people call them whatever it is but one of the greatest factions that controls our society right now is those that control the money supply right it's like drug dealers they got people addicted to growth to money to power and they can do almost anything they want as long as they promise whoever they want money control and power okay dude my father troll 21st gave this name to me before he died he was the best troll i can't ever be like him oh that's unfortunate troll 20 the 22nd hopefully the troll 21st was would follow the footsteps of troll the 20, 20th and troll the 19th and so on and so forth so your generation if we do generational multi multiplier what's the generational multiplier i don't know generation a generation right now because time is speeding up it's five years within five years that next generation is crazy right but let's assume it's birthing age right let's assume the next generation pops in when people start having kids so anywhere between 20 to 30 so if you're the 22nd, 22nd times 20 is two times 20 is 400, 
and then 440, right? So 440 years, your ancestors have been trolls, minimum. Proud heritage. <laughs> I mean, the crazy thing about Amazon is it just started out with him and a few others boxing up and shipping out books, and it just kept growing. Yeah. And where'd the funding come from? Amazon has a huge amount of funding from the Pentagon, I believe, right? What do you think will happen to the trillion dollar company Amazon after Bezos' demise? Nothing, the CIA will run it. <laughs> really? I don't know. It'll still function. It's just, it's like what happened to Apple when, uh, what's his name, died. Uh, I forget his name. The other representative what do you mean dude i'm not even memeing do you th oh dude are you kidding me i mean i mean look at the trick me uh troll the 22nd you do your ancestor trolls injustice after 440 years this is where you are this is the trolling you do it's like saying what you're asking is like saying, do I think Christians run the world? Do I think Muslims run the world? Do I think brown hair people run the world? Do I think, nah, dude, troll the 22nd, you are banned. Banned. Troll the 22nd. Banned. <laughs> you're out. 30% of the company is owned by his former wife, isn't it? Maybe, maybe. But then where does that go, right? Where does that go, I ask? Nothing will happen, right? Amazon will still be Amazon. And protectionist policies will be put in place and are being put in place to make sure Amazon remains the dominant force in the Western world. Chicho, what sources do you recommend to read about banking oligarchy? Oof. Uh, the first one I would read is, uh, it, it doesn't go into the, um, uh, what do you call it? Who, who controls everything and whatnot, right? But it's a short book and is uh, uh, Butler, uh, Wesley Butler's um, War is a Racket. That's the reason I did a <laughs> the red card of the trolls. Yeah, that's the reason I did a reading of it, of, of it, right? So let me find that. Chicho War is a racket. General Wesley Snipes, right? General Wesley Snipes. Here, War is a racket by Major General. Uh, here, let me give you the link. Major General Smedley Butler. I forgot the Smedley part, right? Read that. Okay. Here, I'll provide you this link. And in the description of the video, you'll find a link to the book online that you can read for free. It's this big. It's very short. You can read it in half a day, right? In, in an hour if you're a fast reader. Half an hour if you're a fast reader. Start with that. That book is the one I refer to always when people come up and say oh chicho the banking systems don't run the world i say here here's a book that the most decorated marine in u.s history up to like 10 years ago wrote and he was a general and he was the most decorated decorated uh military officer in the united states and he wrote those books and it says all wars are bankers wars period right no questions asked done deal it's over right and then you can dig down into the nitty-gritty of it if you want and the nitty-gritty there's a few different people who have written books about this matt talibi is very good okay matt talibi's articles i would recommend um chris hedges has written a fair bit about this but he doesn't really go into the banking oligarch systems um another person that wrote about this um dave uh, S uh, S uh he, he writes about uh, sports and he linked up how the 
sporting institutions uh, when they build these multi-billion dollar complexes send the city into into debt servitude because they borrow a lot of money and stuff uh, De Dave seven 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 and troll 22nd dies along with his ancestors <laughs> yeah injustice his ancestors rolling in his on their graves are going oh what a what a genetically <laughs> I can't even go there <laughs> my pleasure uh, curious Devin who runs the world girls mm. half the half the world's population runs the world <laughs> I don't know what that means water from the toilet seat Andy how are you doing hi all I still have uh, to read skin in the game skin in the game is a good book skin in the game is a good book I finished it um, I was gonna do a little bit more on it but we did a fair bit so it's out there it's from a Beyonce song is it who runs the world girls is it from a Beyonce song just the meme basically is it I'm not up to date in my memes I thought it's weird I did I never got attracted to memes um, I had a little blip with them I was like yeah I feel but it's just noise right they they do have a purpose right they do um, help in that herd mentality where people go in this direction they're sometimes legitimately sometimes a lot of times falsely right um, but I think um, it's basically I look at it on the same lines as this when YouTube first started when Google bought it out um, you know I was making videos and people were telling me Chicho your videos are too long right and I said, look, man, I'm, I'm not here to make a sound bite. They're saying, no, you, you can't make your videos uh, playing on across uh, above. So I'll come closer. They, they were like, no, you know, you can't make you shouldn't make your videos longer than five minutes. Make them two and a half minutes and stuff like this or three minutes. And definitely don't go over five minutes and whatnot. I was like, dude, I can't I can't do that. Right. And at the time on YouTube, you could you couldn't even load on videos longer than 10 minutes. Right. So I had to break up some of my videos, math videos I was doing. And one of the reasons uh, I disagreed with that was because um, if you want to make people appreciate and understand a certain thought, then you can't con condense that thought into a soundbite because it won't, it'll, it'll sever its link to all the other things that surround it, right? That's the same way I look at memes, right? They have this thing, words, image, whatever it might be. Now moving memes and sound memes and stuff like that. But that meme has different meanings for different people. And the depth of it only goes so far with some people if they haven't dug down. They don't know where that goes. So when you flash a meme, some people are very shallow in their thoughts of what that meme means and it goes on a it's radial pattern really but let's put it on a scalar system and some people can link it up loop it all the way back right memes are i look at memes in the same light as titles like capitalist anarchist libertarian they they only have a very superficial meaning girls are still building a look men for purpose uh i as i think you're so wrong on that dude you're so wrong on that it's it's uh it, it's it's uh it, it's it's it, i'm actually uh surprised you would actually say that do you think they could be behind assassinations such as kennedy oh banking oligarchs 100 percent. of course yeah curious stuff it along with other factions right the banking oligarchs are one faction one of the most powerful faction some people say the most powerful faction right I don't know that but I know they are one of the factions and they have a hand to play in many other uh, many things that happen around the world along with different factions I'm not interested in finding out who all these factions are I have my own idea who these factions are I just fine-tune my uh, 
detectors to a level where I'm not I still get fooled every now and then but I'm not fooled as often as I used to be by these factions right so our our responsibility in large part as far as I'm concerned is to fine-tune our skills where we're no longer herded like cattle based on the whims of the powers that be we want to be our own human beings how do we achieve that do we achieve it by yelling fire do we achieve it by talking about means propagating them or do we achieve it by understanding the data by breaking down the system and realizing that the evil is not the representative an institution has put in front of us to be the face of that institution the evil the problem is not this face this leader it's the system within it right and then we have to make the choice if we want to function with it that within that system if we want to work towards bringing that bringing down that system or do we want to create an alternative system for me the best solution is to create alternative systems for people to migrate towards right because these things are going to collapse and they are collapsing and people are going to require places to go they're going to need places where they can trust the sources of information they can go and uh, realize that the people that are working that have established this system are doing their best to make sure that they're sharing accurate information uh, i hope i'm 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 trying to sort of be very gentle with what i'm saying okay by the way google's uh, stoop project firefly official stoop project firefly what is that man what's project firefly i forget what it is is that the one where they were working with the pentagon stop stop project fire officially um is that the one where they were working with pentagon or nsa uh, but to create the software for uh what was it uh, the facial not the facial recognition i think it was related to missiles or something i forget what it was it had multiple applications if that's the case they officially said they've stopped it but I don't trust Google. Like they burned their last bridges with me a while ago. So I'm basically done. Um, aside from obviously YouTube and being blog spot and stuff like this, everything else that I'm rolling out in regards to what I'm doing online is going to be off of Google. What are my thoughts about central banks? Uh, horrendous. Um, the, because the, the central banks that we have right now are controlled by oligarchs. They're not central banks. Centralization, I'm against. But they're not central banks in terms of what people think they are, where they have the best interests of the citizens of the country in, in mind. The central banks that are running our Western governments right now have the best interest of the oligarchs in mind because the oligarchs run our governments right now. Not in the West, not just in the Western world, but all over the world, right? So their their agenda is to keep those in power in power, not to empower the citizens of countries. We must do our duty and work for humanity if we wish our days to be long. I as agree with that by the way check this out so here i'll give you an example right uh, they dictate monetary policy which has have, has a direct effect on the economy agreed but the effect that it has is not necessarily in the interest 
of the citizens of the country right it's in the interest of the oligarchs running that system right oops sorry i was talking about project dragonfly not project fire uh, firefly sorry um okay which ones there's so many different names on the andy on the, the on the th stuff going on i've personally lost track of all the different projects out there right from pnac uh like pnac uh, mk ultra uh, what was the one where the cia implanted uh editors in the mainstream media from the 1960s um mockingbird uh, i forget what it was money supply controlled interest rates controlled and and money supply controlled in what way right even credit that shit is so flawed 100 percent flawed starsky but what they did they made interest-free loans to themselves and then for acting as a known to pass on that money to citizens of a country they collected interest right so they would get interest-free loans in the tunes of hundreds of billions of dollars right and then they charge interest for people to borrow that money right so if if we even assume that they were paying 0.25 percent one basis point interest to the government or whoever it was right if they're charging and they are anywhere between five to ten percent to credit cards 18 20 25 percent right 0.25 to 5 10 percent the markup what a business what a business right and they don't even i mean they just been given the power to create money out of thin air as the saying goes right it's just digital oh would you like a hundred thousand dollar mortgage borrow hundred thousand sure we'll do that what do you have assets this is the interest we're going to charge done over right hundred thousand dollars pop passed on to some joe blow that uh halva going back to one of the things i was mentioning so how do we change how do we improve our societies right one of the things as you know i've done for the last little while yeah well project firefly was the sense um, censored search engine in developing by google for china oh that one yeah yeah dragonfly okay officially ended that's probably because we're in a trade war right dragonfly so that's probably because we're in a trade war and the word is coming down from the top to google right that hey <laughs> that uh they need to pull out of china right so slowly there's a lot of western companies that are going to be cutting ties with china right this trade war is for real and it's not just a trade war this is a war period okay will it turn into a hot war i don't think so i sure hope not okay but we are at war with china and the word has been passed down to google and to other companies that they need to pull out period and they will abide they will do but going back to just one of the solutions that we have right so as you know i've been making a lot of math videos for the last 12 years or so right and one of the things i've constantly said is we need to decentralize power we need to provide solutions to people we need to provide platforms for people space for people to come and participate in learning in educating in uh, sharing in trade or whatever it might be right in the last little while what i've seen is and fantastic right what i've seen is more and more people doing what we started doing 
I guess, live streaming like a year and a half ago, two years ago now, I guess, or something like this. And the videos we were creating like 12 years ago, a lot of people are creating math content. But right now I'm seeing a lot more people doing math live streaming, drop in math live streaming sessions, right? Fantastic. That is amazing. That is one of the solutions we need. Just imagine if there were millions of people live streaming math tutorials, math help around the world, right? How fast would be would we be able to make the world literate in the language of mathematics? And what are the effects that is going to have in our societies, right? Just imagine if seven plus billion people that we have on this planet right now were all literate in the language of mathematics, right? Understood what data meant, could read charts, could manage their finances, would understand what compound interest meant, right? If everyone knew how to manage data, the world would be an amazing place, a much better place to live in than it is right now, right? That is the end game. It's not the memes, it's not the sound bites. How can we win against China in the long run in a trade war or a uh, dom dominant? I don't know what that word is. China is over a billion people. Most of the world's industries are located in China. Um, sick, sick, I keep on forgetting how to pronounce your name. It's not winning. Uh, against China how, it's not winning against China right is providing an alternative to what China offers an open system a fair system a decentralized system what will happen with China is what happens to all centralized institutions when they get much too big right they collapse in on themselves okay China is not there yet. China is growing like mad and it will continue to grow, right? The things that will take down China, if they start using force to implement their policies, if they start to, if they continue to try to centralize power, which looks like they will be trying to do, right? If they don't play nice with other nations, if they do some of the things that the United States is doing, they will turn back, right? How can we win against China? According to the rules set right now, we cannot win against China because China is one gigantic corporation, centralized corporation that dwarfs the largest corporations in the United States. Okay. China has innovated much faster than any corporation in the United States. Okay. So we have to ask ourselves, why have they been able to do this? And I thought Google turned into good. <laughs> Google turned into good. <laughs> but is there any evidence is, is uh, Google is communicating with the powers that be, or is this all speculation? Sure, there is. No, for example, here, I'll give you one example, right? Um, I forget the Google CEO's name, the guy with the glasses, he looks really geeky and stuff like this. And uh, this was 10 years ago or so, where <laughs> machine called, I'm gonna allow this, you're a Chinese shell, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm not sure who that's directed towards. Oh, so, no, I don't think he's a Chinese shell. I'll read the rest of the comments. But here's one thing, uh, I forget what the guy's name is, the Google CEO guy. Um, uh, bah, 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 bah. Anyway, I forget what it is. Uh, basically, they asked him why it was that Google was collecting all this data, all this metadata, okay, and censoring certain searches and all this jazz, and why they were behaving in such a way which went against their philosophy of do no evil right and the Google uh, Google CEO said this Speci I'm paraphrasing but basically this is what he said he said 
if people if you people want us not to do this then you have to change the laws we uh, are we are functioning in the United States and the United States laws are set this way so when the government of the United States tells us we have to do this thing we have to do this thing right so it's not us that are the problem okay it's the laws are forcing us to do this okay so right there we know that Google is in talks with the government because they function within the United States they have to abide by what the government says okay if they're in China they have to abide by what the centralized Chinese government says China is so power oriented pure communism um, I don't know if you call it communism I call it oligarchy Google is the most used search engine on internet Google is the main source for information on the internet why wouldn't they work with powers that are in control it's hard to get so big globally without some good friends yeah China is a great nation China have have had some of the finest leaders in the world throughout history China have been building their nation for so many years here's here's the thing um, sticks are man um, and a machine called when you say he's a shill for China okay which I disagree okay because if you look at the data more people have been pulled out of poverty in the last 30 years in China alone than the rest of the world I believe right they pulled like what I forget what the number is this is in the hundreds of millions right at least minimum the population of the United States equivalent to the population of the United States 330 million people out of poverty in the last 20 years right I believe it was 600 million but let's stick with 330 million right that's who they pulled out of poverty right what has happened in the last 20 years to the citizens of the Western world China has done well for the majority of Chinese citizens there's no denying that okay the data shows that the question is where is it going right this this economy is of scale hive mind Google's project dragonfly was meant to help China with censorship Google can't be trusted no Google can't be trusted definitely I agree with you what makes you believe that praising China during the current events of what's going on in there um, machine cult I'm sorry you can't just take the events in Hong Kong without taking everything into context and saying evil all of it evil right sure I would not want to live there guaranteed right but you can't just say they're evil now because of what's happening if you don't think they were evil when they were um, after the opium wars where they were killing uh, opium addicts right killing I forget what the numbers are millions of opium addicts right were they not evil then are they evil now right uh, are they bad now why weren't they bad in the past what about the environment so just one event has triggered you so you you consider it to be bad or evil or whatever it is but that's not uh, the way it should work right what China is doing to the Hong Kong protesters the United States did to Occupy Wall Street France did to the yellow vest okay the agent provocateurs operating in Hong Kong right now they're the same type of agent provocateurs that operated in Quebec in Montebella in Canada where agent provocateurs police officers dressed as black bloc were carrying big rocks and we're trying to start a riot during a peaceful demonstration with parents walking with their children right so praising China during the current events of what's going on in there praising Canada based on the events that ha happened in Montebello praising the United States based on the events that happened uh, during the time that Occupy Wall Street was happening 
praising France during the time that the yellow us, which is like over a year now, right? Uh, don't get caught up with the sound bites, okay? But you have to admit that China's acting regarding ethnic minorities bullshit. 100% agree, Andy. I'm not praising China. Understand what I wrote. Yeah, I don't think he's praising them either. I think he's stating facts that Chinese government, the centralized China's government, has done very well for the citizens of China in the last 30 years. There is no denying that. And in the same time, the governments of Canada, United States, Europe, in the Western world have not done well for their own citizens okay there's no denying that private health care in Canada 30 years ago didn't exist for 99.9% .9 of Canadians right now a lot of people require private health care to take care of a lot of things that our general health care, socialist health care, does not take care of anymore. Okay. China has built their economy, building their industrial and manufacturing sector. When US companies move consumer production into space, it will hurt China's economy. It will. When they move out, and it is already hurting China, right? So uh, that's one of the reasons I believe Thailand is seeing a serious boom right there's a lot of industry setting up in Thailand now right consumer production in space what I think uh, moving out of the space yeah uh, production into space out of the space out of China I think that's what he means Dante and by the way one of the biggest news things that's, that's happened that it hasn't even come up yet is space related where the US government says they're basically on a full full speed ahead with militarizing space not that it hasn't been already but they're dropping all pretenses and saying we're going to dominate the military with um, dominate space with military uh, weapons right that's seriously going down the wrong path and all that started you know 40 years ago uh, and every president ever since has been taking it one step further yay it's been a long while since I caught the stream. Jacobi, how are you doing? Weren't you here like last week? Welcome to another stream, by the way. Yeah, sure. SpaceX and Blue Origin are after the possibilities in space, such as production factories, not just tourism. Yeah, and production in space is a lot cheaper than production on Earth. You don't have to fight gravity. No population in space no gravity in space right if you don't have to deal with gravity you can automate things much 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 more easily right and air and friction and dust and whatever it might be no pollution in space no pollution in space yeah that ain't happening for 50 years not yet no i mean in space as in orbiting factories oh really is that what you meant the, when US companies move consumer production into space so you actually did meant into space but that's going to be a while it will hurt everybody's economy curious Devin it's not just going to hurt China's economy once everything moves into space right? 80 years ago World War II started was it 80 years ago uh, here's the thing with Starsky uh, depending on when you decide the beginning of World War II was. Historically, in the Western world, we say 1939 was the beginning of World War II. But in China, the war started much earlier, 1932, I believe. Right? They were in full-out war. Uh, I guess World War II would be when the United States entered the war. That encompasses the world. US is not the only ones with plans for space. No. Militarizing space is not going to be happy. True. I would be sweet to surrender surrender to US. What? But they are 
the most likely. Uh, to a certain degree, Russia is very, very uh, well advanced in space exploration. So Russia could be there just as quickly as the United States. Also, where the hell do you put the waste? Space trash is already a huge problem. Yeah, you burn it up and uh, what do you call it? And it's entry into the earth. And it can. Space waste is just, it'll just burn up. They just put it on a, on a orbit for it to come down slowly and just burn up in space. The next 50 years will be a race for dominance in space. I'm just going to sit back and listen. Not well versed in the business economics world. Enjoy the stream. It's a little intense today, really. Just because, uh, I don't know, maybe the mood I'm in or something like this or what's going on. Uh, but I want to move on from a lot of the political noise that we've had, uh, we've been dealing with for the last year because I think we've done enough uh, politics stream. We've dealt with a lot of the noise. I want to look into stuff like this, like what's coming in the next 50 years or so. Russia was first in space. Don't forget that. USA was way behind Russia in space programs at that point. Yeah. China and Russia seem to be good friends today as well. Maybe they do something together for space. I think they already are, and they will be, for sure. The mentality of uh, the, the one thing that is saving China right now, right? That they're willing to work with other partners. The one thing that is not helping the United States right now, or the citizens of the United States right now, is they're not willing, willing to work with others. They want to force uh, others to do their bidding. If we could bla blast waste into space, think of all the possibilities for the land currently covered in landfills. It it would be too much. Curious, that would too expensive. We thought there was there was thoughts of doing this with nuclear waste uh, decades ago, but the problem with that was what happens if the rocket ship blows up on the way up, right? And three percent. I did the numbers once. Three percent of the. Uh, u.s rocket ships that had blown up in trying to get to space so if, for example on a most extreme front if you try to send nuclear waste into space and it blows up it's going to disperse that waste over a huge part of the earth and all of that is going to become wasteland so the dangers are too much something in the tea curious Devin. yeah it's going to be enjoyable if you go into uh, a more astrophysics discussion, they'll be more active. Yeah, I would love to start talking about the possibilities of space, and maybe we will at some point. I like the idea of friendly competition to drive us to rate to race to space again. Yeah, I would. I would personally love it if we went into space exploration a lot more. I would personally, first order of business would be cut the cut the military spending by half and put that money into a legit non-militarized space program where we start colonizing the moon mars building space stations that orbit at a high orbit around the earth that would be amazing or even put it in orbit around the the moon put put a space station orbiting mars wow amazing what's more interesting in space is the mining of the different minerals and raw materials all the precious metals first one to mine in space won the lottery yeah mining asteroids and other planets yeah and once you set up uh, and there's water that could be extracted from mars right and other planets as well right so you could and comets right so you could extract water from water you could get oxygen so we do have the capability of creating self-sustaining space program space colonies we do have that ability why aren't we working towards that more and i think we have the technology available to us now yes good point do you think that 
will uh, depreciate the value of all our jewelry on earth <laughs> not for a while diamonds is garbage right but what's the inherent value of space stations or people living on the moon mars etc uh, space exploration racer kill right uh, minerals one thing right and the future of humanity is space the like really if you want to extrapolate that to the limit the sun is going to burn itself out in two billion uh four billion years i believe or something like this where to now right do we die off with the sun do we die off once we consume all the resources of planet earth future of humanity and every other living species on this planet is space that's uh, as basic as it gets it will take a long time before we get di diamonds from space first couple of years it goes to government programs yeah um, I don't think we want diamonds is the least valuable jewelry that we have precious gems and stones that we have it's so common it's just in the hands controlled 95 percent of the diamond industry is controlled by one or two families right and they release the stuff sparingly so it has high value people are willing to pay a lot for it, right silly people right speaking of space have you ever heard theories of secret government activity on the dark side and we all for sure curious about it for sure and i don't dismiss it and i don't dismiss it that possibly could be there's been movies made out of that too right platinum metals so expensive and hard to get yeah. uh last i checked the price of platinum had dropped a lot what's happening in billions of years just isn't very relevant no it's not but through mathematics it's just extrapolating into the future right so racer kill how far down do we want to look right like one of the one of the major causes for war that is happening right now and is going to escalate become more and more prevalent in our societies is the water wars right so we've shadow shot all over the earth right we've destroyed natural habitats we're in mass extinctions right now and we've polluted uh, groundwater and surface water around the globe in every country really right so water wars are a real thing and they're gonna become more and more prevalent there's tons of water in space mars is full of water right from what i from if i'm not mistaken io i think is full of water right so when do we decide to go beyond this earth some people say oh we already we're already overpopulated which i don't think so i think the earth can sustain at least one order of magnitude more people uh, on this planet than we have right now so instead of seven billion people we could have 70 billion people living on planet earth as long as we use the resources appropriately right but then what where do we go from there chicho you mentioned some upcoming personal finance content on the horizon what exactly are you thinking well we're going to do a personal finance live stream on tuesday uh two days from now right so we could talk about anything that people want to do like i've had a couple of people contact me saying um one person commented on youtube and another person contacted me personally saying how do i how do I become, um, how do I start tutoring online to generate money online, specifically mathematics, right? Uh, how do, you know, how do I, how do I go about this Chicho? And I said, listen, the best I can do is just share as much as I'm sharing and how I go about my business, right? This is what I'm doing. Uh, I don't, I'm not saying that this is the best way to go about it, but this is the way I'm going about it, right? And if you can improve on this, improve on this and implement it right so we're just going to talk about finance personal finance what to do with your money where you can invest your money right uh, open discussion after this week 
uh, of selling uh, what I've got on eBay, right? I've already created the spreadsheet. I've entered a lot of data in there. The next set of videos we're going to create when in regards to personal finance is going to be taking a look at the first preliminary data of selling comic books on eBay and taking a look at some of those metrics, right? So that's what we're going to do, Kira Stevan. Just talk about the mathematics of investing if we can and just talk about the different uh, disruptive innovations coming up, right? Water is very valuable, a source to control. History tells us this again and again, yeah. Like what's happening in Kashmir has to do with water as well, right? We can absolutely not sustain 70 billion people with our current agriculture output. Dante, I agree. We can sustain 11 billion at most, I guess. Uh, but that comes with extensive ecological damage. So just because we can feed 11 billion people doesn't mean it's actually sustainable. But here's the thing, Dante. The amount of waste in our current societies is huge huge if we can rail that you know bring that in not waste as much use solar technology renewable energies treat the environment appropriately right someone said once oh we have we have these things on planet earth that grow naturally using sunlight and food that the earth provides they they act as filters for the earth right they suck in carbon dioxide release oxygen and take out the toxins and stuff like this and we cut them down and make toilet paper right insanity what would happen if our whole economic system changed that we didn't commodify everything and literally everything has a price tag on it what if we said certain things do not have a price tag on right like even human life has a price tag on it okay just to give you an example in Afghanistan at the beginning stages of the Afghan war when the US went in there they killed a lot of innocent people like tons like ridiculous the numbers were way on like underestimates by a big shot right but they still had to admit to some right one of the first things I put out and I meant it as a as a sharp critique how absurd our current system was right where the United States compensated an Afghani village tribal a tribe because they bombed their uh, wedding party and they ended up killing like 50 people 60 people I forget what the numbers were right and the money that they offered these people if you divvied that up between per person it ended up being five thousand dollars per person right and at the same time that this was happening they offered uh, what do you call it uh, friendly fire victims or something like this someone in the Western world hundred and fifty thousand dollars per person that died it came out to something like this right so the price tag for an Afghani life was five thousand dollars per person based on according to the US military but hundred and fifty thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars Per person for a Western individual, right? So they commodified, we've commodified everything, we put a price tag on everything. We need to change that. Right? I have no doubt we could support 70 billion people on planet Earth if we used our resources appropriately. Okay. People need to learn how to purify water. This way you can purify salt water, which the planet plant uh, have a lot of planet have a lot of to a certain degree but the problem is this when we go and pollute a lake right and if we take that water from the polluted lake and purify it for our consumption okay we get to drink water but what about the plants that are producing the food that we eat they're drinking toxic water what about the animals that are drinking that water? They're drinking toxic water, right? This planet is not just for us. This planet is for every living species on this that's here right now, right? And that is to come. We can't just think about cleaning whatever environment we need to clean just for ourselves. 
it needs to be cleaned for the environment right even if you nuke this planet with all the world's arsenal it will still be more livable than any reachable planet mm, i don't think so racer kill if we nuke this planet with all the nukes that we have uh, earth is done it's a nuclear wasteland for hundreds of years and I disagree the biggest cost for us is getting into space once we're there if we can mine water if we can mine uh, resources metals and stuff like this and if we can set up factories that can build what we need them to build for us to expand then um, uh, we can live on other planets it's that initial step is front end loaded the cost the problem is monoculture and water contamination we need lots of fertilizer to feed set 11 billion and Dante I disagree I think the earth provides the filter of uh, fertilizers that we need okay it's been shown in numerous studies I, I don't have I'm sorry that you can grow a lot more healthier calorie heavy food by using I forget what the terminology is natural ways of doing instead of using heavy petroleum based fertilizers right cow maneuver is one of them right so uh, the data that we have from centralized agriculture uh, is is flawed everyone knows it's better to cut down trees to make toilet paper than using hemp to make toilet paper. hemp is such a bad thing yeah but why are we growing fields of hemp right that we can harvest the seeds get protein grows like mad replenishes the soil and you can make toilet paper we need our arable land to grow hemp though yes it would probably be better to grow hemp uh, than cut down trees for paper 100 and one thing you could do is hemp replenishes the soil so you could slowly start growing hemp and topsoil is one of the resources that are depleting right now as well from what i understand but you could grow hemp over a few years over a certain amount of terrain and replenish the soil and then grow whatever else you want right the total weight of all humans is like 10 times the total of all wild animal uh, mammals overpopulation is real it's manageable it's manageable the reason the weight is so much is because we're in a mass extinction we've been destroying the environment it's not because we're overpopulated it's because we're not using the resources right just look at the war waging going on right now how destructive is that we can build automated factories in space but we can't live there without extremely expensive and by current means impossible terraforming we can't feed 11 billion with organic farming organic yields are simply low here's a thing Dante the yields may be lower than uh, petroleum based agriculture however fact the nutritional value of the foods grown organically is much more than the nutritional value of foods grown through petroleum agriculture petroleum based agriculture maybe fertilizer pesticides or whatever it is right so one thing that will happen if we start moving towards more organic based agriculture we'll see the health of a society improve dramatically once the health of a society improves dramatically you're going to see a lot of waste a lot of resources that were going to maintain or cure illnesses being spent on better things right growing more organic food creating better technology improving uh, the education system the social network and all this jazz right uh, 
I, I know a lot of people in the agro business world or I have known a lot of people in the agro business world they're full of BS really they're full of BS and cow dung requires you to raise cows which is very inefficient chicken dung is amazing fertilizer it doesn't need to be cow dung so you don't it doesn't need to be what I'm saying literally right cow dung we need cow maneuver no we don't necessarily need cow maneuver we could use chicken provide eggs eat pests provide fertilizer chicken droppings are acidic but they're amazing fertilizer which in turn means you can't feed as many people and chickens eat anything <laughs> like really I've seen a chicken eat a rat we need to grow more vertically on every apartment house you can have a small growing project on the roof as well as every city yeah and we need to change our transportation systems and all that there it's not a one tier solution there's multiple tiers associated with this right we are stuck in old thinking patterns because it have been it has been working for the last 60 70 years yeah that may be but you still need calories to live they provide calories really the calorie count on organically grown naturally i don't want to say naturally because that has connotations whatever food grown without the use of heavy pesticides and heavy fertilizers is way more nutrient rich than foods grown through agro business okay fact like look at the golden rice what was it called the golden rice they were trying to put this into that and they showed it doesn't work right combine it's a big amount of space da, 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 da. the total space of all roofs isn't very much mm -hmm. but you could grow sideways right you could have little greenhouses inside every apartment where they have herbs and that has a much larger effect ripple effect than just providing food it also grounds people it's meditative and it provides you nutrients that you can't get through agro business you can't get through your the mineral pills or vitamins that people take through pills right just imagine if everyone had a little herb greenhouse in their apartments and use fresh herbs every day how would their health be affected my god it would improve dramatically greening roofs is definitely a good idea but it won't feed seven, 70 billion people and uh, not initially no not the way things are set up but if we use our resources appropriately we could feed 70 billion people north american food production i haven't ran the numbers yet by the way that's just my general estimate maybe it's 30 billion but i i'm sticking with my 70 billion number north america food production transportation and consumption patterns will have to change in the next 100 years to become more sustainable current models can't support us in the long run 100 percent agreed plan beetle yeah 100 percent agreed it has to change the the transportation of food is insane is insane the amount of energy required to do that is insane there are like 50 households in my apartment complex and our roof is like 400 square meters at most agreed you can't just do it on the roof you have to have little green greenhouses green spaces and apartment buildings you can grow vertically right very interesting discussion by the way yeah yeah i like it it's solutions brainstorming challenging ideas right god you like beetle <laughs> me too just look at a look at a population map the actual space where humans live isn't isn't large even if we use uh, a, t a ton of resources yeah it's uh, re and just think about this when i when i say i'm against centralization i'm against centralization of population as well okay so if you look at the world map 
you see these hubs centers of power and people right now to feed all of these people like these mega cities of 15 20 million people or more you need to transport a lot of resources to maintain this mega city what would happen if you decentralize the population with technology now we can because people can work from home right so if you can decentralize population centers as well then you're cutting out a lot of the transportation of food look at canada we have 33 million people we're the second largest country in the world by land mass right how many people can live in canada it's going to be more than 300 million people easily easily china and asia have the solution for food problem the solution is named insects yeah a high in protein very little fat if any at all high in calcium but is it something that people living in the western world want to eat i've eaten uh, uh, chocolate cockroaches and chocolate ants before working from home seems like a meme very few people can actually do it very few people can actually do it right now dante is because of centralization of the corporations right we're just seeing not eating <laughs> right now we're at the beginning stages of people working from home really this is just the train getting blowing the whistle the train is about to leave the station in right we're just getting going I forget what the estimates are I've looked at some numbers like the percentage of people working from home right now is way way less than 1% it's estimated and again um, don't quote me on these numbers from what I remember within 50 years it was estimated that 5 10 20 percent of the population in the Western world anyway is going to start working from home that is huge 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 what is that going to do in regards to footprint on planet earth transportation food health uh, the types of companies that are going to emerge the disruptive innovation the companies that are going to collapse what's that going to do I can honestly tell you for me I was I was from all the people that I knew I've been one of the first people that started working from home even when I was doing geophysics I would bring my home work home because I had a faster computer at home to process data than the office that was you know I forget what it was 200 people that they could give me right this was in the 1990s right I would bring the work home work from home I would charge the company um, computer power and I had zero transportation costs and I would produce the work faster than what the deadlines were okay and I would use less hours so all over the board less strain on the system better work produced right back then I didn't know anyone else that was doing what I was doing that was like 25 years ago right 20 years 20 years ago let's say right 25 25 20 years ago okay 15 years ago I started doing this online stuff I didn't know anyone else that was doing it when I started doing it personally I knew there was other people doing it okay since that time of 15 years I have friends and family that are working from home this is just the beginning stages of working from home really uh, it's it's a game changer it's a game changer imagine a imagine a crunchy fried spider mm. what are crabs lobsters right being being more spread out worsens the problem over population uh, racer killed I don't I don't know 
why would it worsen the problem of overpopulation if everybody had a little garden in their backyard they could grow food and there was communities set up where collectively they built what they needed within the community why would it uh, worsen the problem of overpopulation and are we assuming that there's a problem with overpopulation maybe there's a problem with overpopulation in certain pockets but I can honestly tell you one of the reasons you're seeing mass migration coming into Europe is because the European leaders realize that hey they have a population decline problem so they need to kick up the population right to maintain their economic growth now I'm not defending their economic models right I totally disagree with their economic models but overpopulation is a very general term used by many people one of them being Bill Gates right oh the world's overpopulated if the world's overpopulated mr. Gates why in the world did you go have kids you little what should we call him right so overpopulation is a BS term used as an umbrella term to get a certain agenda across some people will say agenda 21 or 51 or whatever the hell that is right I don't think we have an overpopulation problem Canada doesn't have an overpopulation problem we have a population declining problem Japan doesn't have an overpopulation problem Japan is gonna have a serious problem with underpopulation because the baby boomers are gonna start dying off so overpopulation where we'll have to change our standards about living space get rid of the front lawn front lawn is ridiculous right like crazy replace all or most grass in personal yards with garden spaces the most irrigated crop in the world is long grass what a waste of water 100% agree with your beetle and kick get this get this I live in a place where there's a lot of people growing a lot of food I'm very lucky right however some retarded people came along and two blocks down from us they built a house right and on the front lawn they put astroturf in there plastic grass right okay they're not watering the grass so they're saving water but plastic grass they have in a neighborhood that in front of a lot of the houses you got gardens food growing right wow incredible right living in a small village out in the countryside self-sustainable in growing food I live in one of these countries who needed more population growth I'm from Sweden and let me tell you Sweden is the biggest banana Republic in the world Sweden man I wish you weren't I wish you weren't <laughs> overpopulation globally the most developed nations have stabilized but a lot of developing countries are experiencing massive growth yes they are like Nigeria I believe that had a hundred million population at the beginning of the century is expected to be 300 million by the end of the century. like a hundred years triple population crazy right why is that happening one of the reasons that's happening is because of global geopolitics extraction of resources oil mining uh, interference intervention from Western powers and Eastern powers right so there's a lot of a lot of play here tink 10 how are you doing hi Chicho just got here how's the stream been going pretty good man pretty intense I'm just in a heavy mood right I'm in a no tolerant mood I'm being harsh with everybody I think maybe my apologies for that if I am but it is it is <laughs> big C <laughs> what's so bad about that uh, about what so the economy shrinks do you honestly believe that refugee waves and uh, social groups with extreme high birth rates third world will help first world countries like Japan there's such a massive gap between these uh, societies it just can't work uh, big C I'm not saying it's, it's a solution I don't think it's gonna work right I think for the short-term mindset mentality that's what the Western leaders are doing which I think is retarded right destructive beyond means and one of the reasons they began this whole process is they destroyed count how many countries have Western powers destroyed in the last 30 years really 
just in the last 10 years how many countries have we destroyed right that guaranteed mass migrations into the Western world horrendous business model horrendous business model I don't think a shrink a shrinking economy and shrinking population is a bad thing right but according to Wall Street and our current crony capitalistic oligarchic system they can't afford that business model because they're trying to inflate bubbles right it's gonna pop smaller population centers can't have everything done locally so in total it would require more transportation it's easier to transport and distribute resources to fewer large populations a uh, racer kill maybe this was the case 50 years ago 100 years ago but right now with technology I disagree I think we have the means to provide most of what small center populations need 3d printing is not a joke 3d printing is one of the things that on a larger scale can seriously change the face of this planet okay seriously change the face of this planet food growing food much of the world you could grow food to sustain a certain population right if just imagine if we created a population density a country had its population distributed according to how much food they could grow in that region right and how much what the population they could sustain it would be incredible it would be incredible Japan will be fine with 100 million people I mean uh, giving how tiny the island is they really are overpopulated uh, but their economic system is not growing right and they're having hiccups okay I agree with you that I don't think there should be population growth and by the way I I don't think we should shoot for 70 billion people on planet earth I I don't think so but the reason I don't think so is not that the earth can't support it is that if we shoot for 70 billion people on planet earth it means the only thing we've been thinking about is to populate the earth more why aren't we thinking about populating space why aren't we thinking about ending war why aren't we thinking about cleaning up the environment why aren't we thinking about protecting species why aren't we thinking about diversity in language right I'm not saying mega cities are good inherently but they are more effective in a lot of ways for very few things very few things race or kill right now with technology we can offer much of what large cities have offered in the past to small communities we can it's doable it already popped in uh, Sweden in several ways Sweden is totally experiencing the biggest wave of people moving out of Sweden because of this cool that is that a good thing kiss our man Sweden or moving to Denmark Norway and Finland instead uh, <laughs> I guess it must be a good time to buy a house in Sweden the migration now is due to a lot of reasons instability is part isn't the only one the primary reason is ability to do it and incentives yeah and one of the reasons people are we're seeing mass migration is because of uh, uh, environmental effects droughts the lack of ability to grow a certain type of crop that have been that people have been growing there for decades or centuries right so the environment is changing right so we're seeing serious food insecurity food and water insecurity i think lowering population is a bad thing if people aren't having kids is uh, symptomatic of problems in the culture uh, i mean I, I disagree i don't necessarily think um, a culture is healthy if it's having kids i think a culture is healthy if it's producing it doesn't necessarily have to be producing other human beings it could be producing innovation food technology it could be a center for education uh, 
for many things, uh, arts, right? I agree with Terence McKenna to a certain degree on this front and other people where they say culture is the enemy, right? People try to maintain a certain mindset, certain belief system that has been detrimental to, if not them, to their neighbors. All that has to change. Likewise, I want to be part of a country that has a plan to last a thousand years, economically, environmentally, not just the four years till the next leader or like the 100% agree. I can't stand the growth obsession. Yeah, I agree with you, Dante. I hate the growth obsession, really. Even though I want my channel to grow right on YouTube here and stuff like this, but I only want it to grow to a level where I can do what I need to do, what I've promised everyone to do, that I'm going to do right i don't want it to grow on the level of whoever some of the top youtubers or top twitchers are i, I have no desire for that you're going to see hundreds of millions of people moving north within the next hundred years yeah dante i agree with you i agree which is one of the reasons that uh certain factions in the u.s government want to build a wall they know what is coming okay like really if you look at all this stuff they know what is coming there are mega cities in india that are running out of water like really there are cities in india with millions of people living in them and their main water supply is running dry what are they going to do where are those millions of people going to do are they is, is there going to be tens of th hundreds of th tens of thousands of water trucks coming into the city every day to provide water for these millions of people that are running out of water in these mega cities what's going to happen right depends on where you buy the house where i live this is sweden if a house is valued at five thousand k you probably have to pay at least ninety thousand k uh, before the last bidding war start oh so you still seeing the bubble in housing continue the bubble in housing in canada has already popped but it's it, it, let me rephrase the bubble the bubble uh the housing bubble in canada has a leak right right now two years ago if a house in my part of canada was valued at five hundred thousand, it would sell for seven hundred fifty thousand, seven hundred thousand, six hundred thousand right right now if a house is valued at five hundred thousand it sells for four hundred fifty thousand right i'm just using the percentages because you, you can barely buy any houses here five hundred thousand but in general a million two years ago was selling for 1.3 1.4 a million right now is selling for 900 okay so there's a leak it might pop that sounds very neoliberal what does India is a horribly prepared country yeah India is in deep trouble that's one of the reasons what's happening is Kashmir is happening water right they, what's happening is Kashmir it doesn't have to do with religion or there's uprisings and unrest and India trying to bring stability back to the region or any of that crap it has to do one of the main things that has to do with is water we're seeing the beginning of the water wars there's been skirmishes of water wars in that region but we're seeing the beginning of the water wars taking place in that region this is a big deal this is a big deal and it's going to spread to other parts of the globe okay Oh my god we've been at this for two hours what's going on said the country's birth rate wasn't a problem if they were producing oh, within reason right you don't you can't have a birth you can't have a population of 30 million people for it to drop to 10 million people right is it okay thing to happen I don't know I don't think so I, I wouldn't want that right because the demographics would totally change and stuff like this but you don't need the population of 30 million people to continue to grow at 
three percent the rate of inflation every year that that's ridiculous all right that's compound growth but gang i gotta i gotta end the stream i have a friend visiting us for a few few days i need to go to the uh to the ferry to pick them up they're visiting from the east coast from new york new york <laughs> this stream went crazy fast i totally lost track i love the conversations uh by the way apologies for being a little harsh but um i think the world is going to get a little bit harsher ah uh, see you then she just see you later think i think the world's just going to keep on getting a little bit harsher so uh we're going to have to take a little bit harsher tone for these political streams because I don't want the troll action to come uh, too much and all that jazz okay aside from that gang uh, thanks for being here uh, appreciate the conversation we're gonna go at it again on Tuesday we'll talk about personal finance I think we're starting that at uh, uh, 12 p.m. my time okay and then on Wednesday mathematics is back we're doing a math live stream I think we're starting it at uh, two we're gonna go from two till four i think um if i'm not mistaken but they're posted on the twitch events page and i tweeted about them and they're on the patreon page and the subscribe star page and whatnot okay so if you can make it fantastic if not i'll announce more streams later on and i'm going to get back into doing some edited videos soon okay soon we'll get back into that okay uh, aside from that uh, thanks a lot again uh, thank you for uh, Dante for taking care of business Casey for popping in um, I forget who the other mods were that were here there's a couple other mods that were here too I think or one other mod but thank you for the mods for taking care of business very very much appreciated okay very much appreciated see you, see you guys later see you Dante Anian. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Bye, everyone.